So today we'll be getting into some stories with Paige, Liv Morgan, and more. For today's question of the day, would you be excited for Paige's wrestling return? Let's start off with this story because there's a lot to go over with Paige. Paige went live on Twitch this week and didn't hold back at all. She went over a handful of topics from SummerSlam all the way to her return to the ring. So we'll take a look at the topics Paige touched on and see what she had to say. First off was her WWE contract status. It was announced on WWE backstage in 2019 that Paige had signed a new multi-year deal with WWE. Well, it appears that her deal was a three-year deal. She had this to say on her contract status during a recent stream. My contract is up in June of next year. Who knows if they would want to give me a new contract? Who's to say they wouldn't want to? If they did, I'd love to have Twitch as a part of the contract. So yes, this has been a very big issue for not only Paige, but plenty of the other superstars as well. There was a handful of WWE superstars that were on Twitch in years past, but nearly the entire locker room started streaming in 2020, especially with the entire pandemic going on, where there wasn't much to do. Every superstar just started coming over to these platforms like Twitch, YouTube, Cameo, and more. So it was on the down low for a while, but once literally everyone started doing it, it seemed to finally catch WWE and Vince McMahon's attention. That's when WWE sent out the notice that superstars were no longer allowed to be on these third-party platforms. So, everyone was forced to stop the streams, stop the cameos, stop the paid subscription services, and this led to a lot of conflict. This entire mess is what eventually led to Zelina Vega's release as well. It's a very big deal and Paige has been very vocal about staying on Twitch because Without being able to get in the ring, streaming has become her passion and main way of interacting with fans. Paige was just really enraged by the ban. So she's putting it out there right now that if WWE wants to bring her back next year when the contract expires, they're going to need to add the ability to stream on Twitch to Paige's contract. So will they budge and give that incentive to her contract or Will they let her walk after June? That's going to be a big question because telling by the sound of her comments, she's not signing anything new unless the ability to stream is included in the contract. So that entire situation seems like it'll be dealt with next year in June. Paige was also very vocal about Bianca Belair's booking at SummerSlam. That has been something that Nikki Bella was critical about as well. Paige said that she didn't like how Bianca Belair was squashed at SummerSlam and believes that it accomplished nothing for women's wrestling. And this is true. We've been over this topic a few times, but it appears that WWE's main intention behind squashing Bianca was to get fans to turn on Becky for that cheap win. But like we've heard from fans, Nikki Bella and now Paige, it just didn't accomplish anything for women's wrestling. If they went out there, had a decently long match, and then Becky cheated at the end of the match for the win, then maybe that would have accomplished the same thing of turning her heel, but received much better than the squash. Paige also talked about her own journey back to the ring and had this to say about how that's going so far. I'm not done yet. This is going to be my comeback story. I'm inspired. I'm so inspired by the people coming back to wrestling. And the more I think about it, I'm like, okay, mentality, I'm ready to go. I'm going to start working around getting in the ring a little bit. Maybe, we'll see. This is not saying I'm making a comeback tomorrow. It's a long road. I still have to get cleared by doctors. I have to get cleared by WWE. It's such a big process, but emotionally, I'm ready. The past few months, I didn't think I was emotionally ready, but no, I'm ready to get back on the horse. Even if it takes me a year, one step at a time, build to it. That's exactly what I'm doing. There's a whole journey and it's going to take some time. She also said that if she gets cleared that she won't tell a single person, so that it won't be leaked and will remain as a surprise. She also wants Sasha Banks to be her first opponent when she returns. She feels like there's story there and said that no one is pulling off matches like Sasha Banks right now. 
So Paige is very hopeful and keeping a positive mindset about returning to the ring one day. And like she even alluded to, there's just so many inspiring stories in wrestling right now about miracle returns, such as Edge and Daniel Bryan, two top wrestlers who went down with horrific injuries in their mid-30s, but made miracle returns to wrestling now in their 40s. The advantage that Paige had over Edge and Daniel Bryan's injuries is that she was hurt in her early 20s. So a lot of people think that since it happened at such a young age, she still has plenty of time to recover and still return maybe somewhere in her mid 30s. So Paige isn't giving up hope and neither are the fans. Hopefully Paige is back in the wrestling ring sometime in the near future. Liv Morgan recently revealed a private conversation that she had with Becky Lynch. The conversation happened in May of 2020 where Becky had just announced her pregnancy and why she was stepping away from WWE. Liv Morgan told the story on Talking Smack. You want to know a little secret? When Becky left, I gave her a hug goodbye. She whispered in my ear, when I come back, you are going to be champion. I've thought about that every single day. She's back and I'm not champion, but I'm looking so, so, so forward to proving her right. Maybe not on her timeline, but I'm going to be a champion, and I'd love to take it off of Becky Lynch. So Liv Morgan definitely has the support of a locker room juggernaut like Becky Lynch. Becky believed that Liv Morgan would win while she was away from WWE. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Liv Morgan doesn't seem so upset, though, because she thinks it'll even be more poetic if she does become champion and take that title off the woman who told her she'll be champion one day. And that whole scenario there is a great one. You have Becky Lynch telling Liv that she'll be champion one day real soon. And how ironic would it be if Liv became champion by defeating the woman who told her those words? That's just such a great little story to build on. Liv Morgan is naturally in the underdog babyface role. She's not an obnoxious character that gets annoying or does crazy things. She's just this genuine babyface character that constantly gets looked past, and you just naturally want to see her win and be successful. That's the great thing about Liv Morgan. She's very easy to get behind and root for, and that's exactly the story that WWE was trying to get at with her leading up to Money in the Bank. Carmella was getting awarded a spot in the match for being a former champion. Zelina Vega got a spot in the match when she hasn't won a match since last September. And then there was Liv Morgan, who actually had to earn her spot. That's why Liv Morgan had the best story heading into the Money in the Bank match. So, it was surprising when not only did she lose that match, she was then gone from WWE for 40 days after that match. Fans have been waiting for WWE to do something with Liv Morgan ever since. She had all that return hype in 2019. But here we are two years later and Liv still hasn't had a single big featured storyline. Liv Morgan has also never competed for a women's championship. So when you talk about fresh faces coming into the title picture, Liv Morgan towards the top of that list for sure. So hopefully things start going in a great direction for Liv Morgan and she can make Becky's words to her come true one day. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.